Welcome to Meet Me at the Movies. Nolte Manning II here. Glad you guys could join us, however you choose to do that. If you're doing that through C19 TV, we appreciate it. If you are uh, watching the stream, that is at C19.tv. And if you're listening to the podcast, that's through WG, WG.org. Uh, I am Noel T. Manning II, uh, hanging out with, uh, with some guy who likes to uh, claim my name as well, Thomas Manning. Uh, he's, he just uh, he couldn't think of anything original, so he decided to go, uh, go for mine. Thomas, good to see you, man. Yeah, I'm kind of like J.J. Abrams in that sense, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas, we I'm appreciate sorry. it. I'm no sorry. Worries. That was mean. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. I appreciate you being here. Uh, and, hey, a friend from my past, and I wore this jacket just for him, uh, John Heath is the first guy that I ever remember getting to spend time with back when I was a teenager or a, a young adult talking movies. John was the first person I remember that actually got movies because he worked at a movie theater because uh, nobody else would hire him. And um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so John, I'm so glad to have you, man, back. Now, now John, if you want to know my background, John's got a lot of stories about me. Uh, and Thomas, I think, has a few questions relating to that. <laughs> And, uh, and John is a big fan of wrestling, and so uh, on today's show, we're going to spend some time talking about wrestling-themed films or wrestlers who went on to be in films, and uh, that's why I'm wearing my jacket today, John. I wore this just for you. What you think, man? I think that you would do Bobby the Brain Heenan very proud. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, John, it's good to see you, man. Really good to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Thomas. Hey, yeah, great to meet you finally. So, uh, so John, you you have had this kind of a love for film for a long time, and and you know back when we first met, you know you were talking about movies, and and other people would look at you and go, "What is this guy talking about? What what is he talking about?" So, so what is it about film that that engaged you, and and why has it continued to engage you? Well, I'll tell you that when we moved back to Goldsboro for being retired, we lived literally a stone's throw from two theaters. And by luck happens, the next door neighbors all worked at the movie theaters. <laughs> so they were all getting me in free. And so that's where I would spend every waking moment because I could just get in to see everything. So I saw pretty much anything you could watch that wasn't rated R because, you know, even then I couldn't get into R rated when I was a little kid. <laughs> what, but I mean, was, was that because of your height? Or was that because? <laughs> no, if it was because of my height, I still couldn't get it. <laughs> I was about to make the same comment, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. the support. Yep. I, so, you know, I saw stuff like uh, All the President's Men and, you know, things that a child should not be watching. Right. But, and I didn't, you know, I probably understood like maybe one fourth of it. But, you know, it really opened my mind to different things and different filmmakers and stuff like that. And then later on, you know, I started working in theaters when I was in ninth grade. And later on, I managed one for about 20 years. And it became less about watching and enjoying the movies. And I'll tell you that I got as much enjoyment out of showing a good movie as I ever did watching a good movie. And so now I'm at the point now where I've disengaged from showing movies and I can enjoy that whole experience again where I just go and I can just relax. Nobody comes to tell me that the popcorn machine is broken. Uh, nobody's the, gonna play. Yes, the, exactly. The reels, the reels messed up. The oh light bulb is burned out. Yes, all of that no, stuff. No, because you know, even when we were in town with competing theaters, if I went to a competing theater and something went wrong, they would come get me. So, you know, really? Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so now it's like I can go and just kind of just kind of sink in that chair and eat my milk duds and <laughs> drink my horribly bad for me soda and yeah. be relaxed. But I've, I've always loved the movies and I watch everything. And, you know, even even now, you know, you've got so many options. you got the streaming options and the, you know, I'm sure there's DVDs rolling around still somewhere. <laughs> but there is nothing like going to that theater and throwing down your $20 million for that bag of popcorn and sitting and watching that in front of the big screen. Yeah, and, and I don't Tom, think there ever will be. Yeah, and Thomas, you feel the same way about missing that experience, oh, don't yeah. you? Yeah, like obviously over the past two months, we've had that that staple in our lives just completely ripped away from us, and it's unfortunate. But um, and of course, we have 
the battle between studios and theaters over rights to certain films. Uh, of course, we had the Trolls World Tour controversy a couple weeks ago, and then AMC claiming they're not going to show any more Universal films. It's just really crazy to think how this time is going to have a ripple effect on the rest of theatrical history, that we're always going to look back to this one moment. And uh, I'll be very interested to see how it plays out, but I'm just hoping that we can finally get back to that that theatrical, like, mystical experience at some point. Oh, yeah. me too, definitely. Yeah, and, 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 you know, it's, um, you know, by the time this show, by the time this show will air, you know, we may have been sliding into theaters, but it's going to be a while, I think, before we have that grand scale sold out theaters that we are used to on that opening weekend. And, and I miss that. I really miss that. I miss showing it and I miss being in it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, during the uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, what are some of the films that you have found yourself going back to, uh, maybe for comfort or maybe even some new things that you you found that maybe you had not? Oh, my gosh. The, the, the biggest thing that I have finally got to watch during COVID is Jojo Rabbit. Yes. yes. And yes. I am so into Jojo Rabbit. I've been telling everybody, you know, it's hard to explain, you know, because on the surface, you know, it's just, and you know, my friends and I watched it together, and it, they they kind of got confused about halfway through. They thought it was a comedy, and then it wasn't a comedy. Yeah. You know, I said, I said, well, how can you really make it a comedy during that situation? You know. Yeah. And uh, but I loved it, and and literally, I would watch that two or three more times before the COVID stuff is over. Yeah. I, so, that is a... literally the highlight of my movie. That's the highlight of my movie year almost. Yeah. Ended with Endgame, and then Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, such a uh, you know, such a brilliant film. Thomas and I, when we saw it, we just could not believe what we were seeing because it was such a different film, and the subject matter, you you just that's not the kind of subject matter you would take on in that way, and they found a way to do it. And and, and uh, we're going to show a picture. We've got a picture with the director, me and Thomas. Uh, we got to have some fun times with him at the Critics' Choice Awards uh, back in January before all this happened. And and Thomas, he's going to write my story. If anybody ever writes my story, oh, he's like definitely. the third choice. Uh, Ron Howard's number one. Steven Spielberg will be number two. And and then we go with Wakiki. Uh, What's I just his like name? Well, how do you say it? I call him Takiwaki. <laughs> what do you call him? It's Takiwaki. It's That's not it? That's not even close? No, <laughs> Thomas, say it, man. Taika Waititi. <laughs> you you got to say I was close, right? Uh, uh, okay, I'll give it to you. I'll give you a pass since you're a, since you're a guest. We'll give it to you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. So, yeah. so Takiwaki, I like that man, Takiwaki. <laughs> all right, John. So, um, you so you grew up watching all types of films and working the theaters. You got to explore all types. Would you say that there's a particular um, filmmaker you're drawn to or a genre that speaks to you more than others or is it just kind of wide open depending on your mood it, well depending on my mood but i'll tell you that for a while i was really into this kind of these guy movies that were disguised as girl movies <laughs> like uh high fidelity okay high, high fidelity movie outwardly about a, a guy a single guy but really when you get into it it's about relationships right which is right. kind of a girl sort of thing yeah, uh, like the Brothers movie. McMullen, uh, stuff like that. Um, you know, there's tons of those around. I was really into that. Now, as just a normal patron customer in my secret identity, <laughs> I'm all about some Marvel movies. Yeah. I could watch me a Marvel movie any day or night, any subject. I don't care. You slap the Marvel logo on it and it's made by Marvel, I'm in there. All right, Thomas, dive in with some Marvel questions because you are a huge huge Marvel fan. You grew up watching these Marvel films and you've been a part of that cinematic experience really, you know, since Iron Man and uh, it's been a part of you. So, yeah. so uh, dive in with some questions for John as it relates to Marvel and then any others you might have. All right. So of course we have the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which kind of dominates the uh, Marvel Studios uh, kind of language that we've had develop over the past decade. But uh, were you a fan of the uh, X-Men, Fox Studios films, and also the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films? How did you feel about those? Uh, the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man I showed, and I had a great time. I thought it was an awesome movie. Yeah. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, um, your dad probably remembers, 
but like up until like the late seventies, people who ran theaters were kind of like showmen. And so when you went to the theater, yes. you just didn't see a movie. You would have people in costumes. You would have stuff going on. And so like I had a dude dressed like Spider Man. I had a guy making Spider Man balloons. And so that was like a big experience for the kids. And I love that movie. Sam Raimi did a really good job to me where I made a great uh, Peter Parker before they messed it up. <laughs> but uh, as a matter of record, aside from like those Fantastic Four, the first two, not the last ones. Yeah. Um, really, I don't like anything that's Marvel that's not made by Marvel. Right. Okay. Those, those X Men, they fought the army. But normal people fight the army. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the villains, the villains weren't quite good enough for you, right? I, or I, bad you know, enough. If they had made X Men Four, I think my grandmother was going to be. The <laughs> yeah, and I think I met your grandmother. So, but she yeah. would, she would probably put up a pretty good fight, man. <laughs> oh, depends on what you did with her. <laughs> Thomas, what else have you got for Mr. John Heath? Well, so what do you think it is about Marvel Studios and the MCU that they've been able to take that separates them from, like, the uh, Fox X-Men movies? I'll tell you the truth, Thomas. They're not afraid of the source material. Um, and, you know, even with uh, Warner Brothers in D.C., those guys, are they all rush to change what they develop. There's a reason why Marvel has been in business since the early 60s. Uh, you know, there's a reason why people like me started out reading comics when we were like five and now we're in our 40s and we still go to see these movies. You know, you've got to trust that material. And those and the, the last few Spider-Man movies, the last few Fantastic Four movies, all those X-Men movies, they just did not trust that material. All those DCU uh, really dark Superman, Batmans. They just did not trust the material. It's like they don't have confidence in themselves, so they kind of lose their way. Which, not to say that you know they don't have good parts about them, but they don't really fit the comic book genre. Now, did you appreciate the uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, Christopher Nolan's? Take? I appreciated them for movies. I didn't really appreciate them for Batman. So. Okay. Okay. What now? Is it also because of source, or what? What was the reason for that one? I don't know something about the way he treated everything just did what and it was a little bit you know like even though you know that Heath Ledger did an awesome job as a Joker it was just a step too far for me. just like the Jared Leto Joker is a step too far for me. Well, I can't a, speak on the River Phoenix Joker because I've never seen that movie <laughs> I knew that was a step too far for me okay so for you and so for you a lot of times for now movies because you're not showing them you choose what you will and won't go see and what what you will and won't and so you knew that river phoenix joker was way too much for you and you just didn't want any part of it yeah i just you know you vote with your wallet yeah you know yeah. you support the product that you think you'd enjoy and all my friends love that joker movie and i bet you if i sat down and watched it i would probably enjoy it too but who knows we'll yeah. never find out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, Thomas and I both have our take on it, and uh, while we thought that uh, River Phoenix uh, Joaquin. was, sorry, thank yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. while we thought that Joaquin was amazing and that he did uh, incredible work, the film was just so, so dark, and it was difficult to watch. I mean, it was really difficult to watch. Not as difficult as watching The Human Centipede, um, but it was I have still... not seen that, thank you. <laughs> It was, but it was still difficult to watch. I think I messed Thomas up right there, didn't I, man? Well, I've never seen the Human Centipede, but a, a documentary watched last night talked about the Human Centipede, and just like five minutes of coverage and commentary on the movie, I was about ready to pass out and just turn off the movie right then and there. But unfortunately, I had to keep watching the movie because I was reviewing it for. Uh, well, for Douglas Davidson over <laughs> Elements of Madness. So, so, Douglas, shout out to you for giving me a movie that's going to scar me for life. <laughs> All right, John, we're going to take a, a quick intermission. Uh, John Heath is our guest right here on Meet Me the Movies. Uh, Thomas Manning as well. I'm Noel C. Manning II. We appreciate you spending time with us right here on C19 TV. Or if you're listening to the podcast, that is through WGWG.org. Uh, after the intermission, we're going to come back and dive into a hot topic. Uh, something that John knows a lot about because he, uh, if he had not been a movie, um, if he if he had not been a uh, a movie showman, 
if he'd not been a movie manager for 20 years, he would have been a wrestler and a dang good one. I, I actually have a big reveal for you after the oh. break. Oh, <laughs> all right. Hang around for the uh, intermission. Come back for more of Act Two of Meet Me at the Movies right after this break. They're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. Chef Paul Prudhomme once said, you don't need a silver fork to eat good food. Well, on Cleveland County Kitchen, we don't have a silver fork, but we sure do serve up lots of good food. Hi, I'm Deborah Blanton. I hope you'll join me for the next Cleveland County Kitchen. Each month, we offer a complete farm-to-table experience. We visit local growers, we learn about nutrition, and wrap things up with wonderful meals prepared by our guest chefs. It's a lot of fun. I hope you'll join me for the next Cleveland County Kitchen. Do you like to work with your hands, build, make something work, show, I've done this, turn your interest into a career? Construction trades at Cleveland Community College can give you the skills you need. Well-trained electricians are in high demand. CCC delivers hands-on training both in and outside the classroom. We have an apprenticeship program that gives students paid on-the-job training in addition to their hands-on experience on-campus classes. CCC makes it simple for students to get ahead whether they want single courses, certificates, diplomas, or associate degrees. Now the question is, are you ready to start your journey today? They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. Welcome back to Meet Me the Movies. I am Noel T. Manning II with Thomas Manning and special guest John Heath, a guy that knows a thing or two about movies and wrestling and a few other thing or twos about something. I don't really know what those other things may be. But, John, good to have you, man. So good to catch up with you. Uh, John and I spent a good, good amount of time together back in Rosewood, North Carolina, Goldsboro, North Carolina, and uh, back in the days when uh, John was a uh, struggling musician. No, you were you were wanting to be a struggling musician and uh, working in the movie. Just struggling. <laughs> struggling. <laughs> and uh, at that time, I was working at Camelot Music, and it became Camelot Music and Movies, and it was during the 80s, and it was a time when the VHS players were, I remember when the first ones were sold, and they cost like $700. It was crazy, and we were selling them, and people were buying them, but we had a video store in the back of the music store, and uh, John and I were, were friends during that time, and we had a good core group of friends, uh, John, uh, John, and there was uh, Chuck Millard, and there was uh, Needham Park, and there was Chuck Carroll, and, and who Minnie. else? Who, who, what? Minnie. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't can't believe can't leave out many love. We we just had so much fun watching movies together. And and you got uh, Thomas. I think you had a question about my childhood or my uh, teen years for for John, right? Oh uh, yeah. So I was wondering if there's any specific stories that come to mind regarding your time together watching movies or back in I don't know how long was it like fifty years ago or so that y'all <laughs> y'all would hang out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a lot yeah, younger yeah. than your father. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. But I'm um, pretty only 40, 45 years ago, yeah. Yes. Well, so uh, when he worked over at Camelon, they converted into that half a video store every night. You know, they got free rentals. So every night, Noel would pick us all out a movie, and all six of us would traipse across the road to my house. And literally, my bedroom was pretty much the size of a phone booth. <laughs> and so these six and semi-grown men and women would <laughs> shove ourselves into this phone booth-sized room and watch a movie. And usually Noel would pick the absolute worst movie in the entire world. And so not only would it be hot and stuffy, but we would just roll with laughter because the movies were so terrible. If, if there was a terrible movie. The other thing I remember about your dad that I would like to tell everybody he really liked the new monkeys. <laughs> yeah. The only person I've ever seen. It has nothing to do with mo uh, uh, movies, but somebody's got to know that in case something happens. Yep, I actually, I, I still still play the CD of the new monkeys. Love those guys. They're, not, they're nothing like the original. I'll be honest with you. They're nothing like the original, but still, they're okay. If they had a different name, I would still have listened to them. So thanks for calling me. I might have too if they had got a different name. That's right. <laughs> well, good. Well, good. Well, yeah, I think part of the, the, the reason why I would choose the bad movies is I think 
that was the plan. We were like, okay, what's the worst movie? And and I, I think we we had a rule that you had to stay and watch it. You had to watch it. You had to watch the very it. Very end. Nobody <laughs> left. And and you know, really, even though we were watching a movie, it was more about the time we all spent together. It was. Yeah. You know, and you can't you can't buy memories like no. that. No, you can't. And it was that was so much fun. And uh, I'm I'm glad we were able to relive that. I wish I wish I could think of what some of those movies were, but some of them were pretty bad. And uh, they most oh, of them most of them. Um, I remember a couple of them were like those World War II propaganda movies, <laughs> where they would tell you not to like pick up bombs, <laughs> not to drink from open liquor bottles you found inside abandoned farmhouses. <laughs> All things I've done, Thomas. By the way. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's well I'll probably g- have to at some point. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that that is a good segue for the last uh, five or six minutes of the show. Uh, wrestling is something that can cause a lot of damage to people's brains and other parts of their bodies, just like bombs and uh, open alcohol can. So, uh, John Heath, you are a lover of, of many things wrestling. You have been for a very, very long time, probably pretty much your whole life. Uh, so let's dive in with a hot topic this week, and the hot topic this week is exploring – Favorite, favorite films that star former wrestlers or favorite films about wrestling. So, John, dive in, and, uh, and Thomas and I might have a, one or two to throw in as well. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, let me say that I'm not going to say The Godfather, <laughs> even though the guy who plays Luca Brasi was a wrestler. Oh, very good. Very but good. But I've never seen The Godfather. <laughs> oh, I knew I'd get that look. That's oh, cool. man. Um, I, any, any list of wrestling movies. Has to start out with Rocky Three, Hulk Hogan, Thunderlips. You know, yes. Sylvester Stallone really paid close attention and really had the wrestling thing going. Um, That's a good one. Princess, That's a good one. Yeah, Princess Bride, Andre the Giant. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, he was at the very tail end of his wrestling career. He could barely move, but you know, he he really gave a, a good performance, a good sweet performance. All right, so uh, Rocky Three, Princess Ride. What else is on your list? Uh, you know, Central Intelligence, starring uh, uh, The Rock and Kevin Hart. It's a it's a, a buddy movie. You've seen it done a thousand times. The two guys they don't get along, then they get along. It's real funny. And really, the reason I picked this movie is because me and my father went to see it in the theater, and I've never seen a human being laugh harder <laughs> at a movie than my dad at this movie. Wow! Wow! And, and he just and he just he just from the minute it came on he was just on the floor and, and i think that's the thing about movies it's it's not just the experience we have but it's the experience we can have with others yes uh, that provide that as well and you know you're talking about Dwayne the Rock Johnson thomas has enjoyed quite a few films from Dwayne the Rock Johnson as well you want to throw out one of your favorite uh, uh, rock movies thomas Oh, yeah, we'll go with uh, San Andreas from 2015. Oh, yeah. A disaster, earthquake, tsunami, everything else, everything other than natural disaster you can think of, kind of combining into one off of California. And, of course, Dwayne Johnson is right there in the thick of it, as always. And uh, it's just, it's an extremely dumb movie, but in the most satisfying way possible. And I just love The Rock's interaction with any other actor or actress that's ever on screen with him. And uh, so he's just so extremely charismatic. And uh, so, yeah, San Andreas, I could pick probably at least five or six more of his, but we'll go with that one. Yeah, he is, totally agree, man. Yeah, he has become a, a true movie star. You know, he's not a, a an Oscar-winning actor, but he is a movie star. And you can't take your eyes off of him when he's on screen. Uh, a, a good double feature, Thomas, with San Andreas would be Skyscraper from 2018. Oh, I'm a sucker for disaster films, and it just so happens he's been in a few of those. Uh, Rampage, I'm going to say, I'm not going to talk about a whole lot, even though I did watch it. But uh, but Skyscraper, there was something about that that took me back to watching The Towering Inferno back when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is pretty, pretty amazing on screen, and he's just fun. He's just fun to watch. Uh, so what else is on your list, John? Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, going back to Marvel, Dave Bautista. Uh, you know, uh, it's mostly Marvel, but, you know, these are characters I had very little use for, and they made me care about them. It, it really worked out well, and, you know, I didn't expect to enjoy that movie, but I loved it. 
I, I think you're with so many others. I mean, Thomas and I were the same way when we first heard that they were going to be doing Guardians of the Galaxy. We're like, what? But then the trailers really sold me off the bat. I'm like, okay, yeah. they're going to have fun with this. And, uh, and Dave and his interaction with everybody was just hilarious. And uh, the, uh, you know, the closing credit scenes where you've got, uh, you've got baby Groot dancing. You know, I mean, there's, there's no dialogue, but just, um, just Dave's interaction was just amazing. And I just, yeah. I love him. I love him. And for being his first movie, aside from like a couple of bit parts, just a really good job. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And then he went on to do uh, show up in Blade Runner, uh, the last Blade Runner film as well. And, and, so. he's, and he's got that new spy movie coming out. That's his right. old movie. Right, which was uh, the spy movie was delayed because of, uh, oh, of COVID-19. It? Yeah, so okay. it's, uh, it's still going to be out at some point. Thomas, anything else that you want to talk about uh, from a wrestling standpoint? Uh, I'll throw in a fighting with my family just from last year, uh, mostly due to Florence Pugh's performance in the lead role. I think this was based on a true story from what I understand, and The Rock actually had a bit of a cameo in it, and he produced the film. Uh, and it was directed by Stephen Merchant. It was in Jojo Rabbit, of course. Uh, but this is just an extremely heartwarming story about this family of misfits who find a place that they do fit. And um, just uh, Florence Pugh is one of our best actresses that we have of this generation. And uh, she just got to show off a different side of her skill set that I haven't seen before. And uh, so, yeah, fighting with my family I flew under the radar, but I definitely recommend it for anybody that hasn't seen it. All right, so uh, any others that you want to make sure you mention? Uh, we are oh. we are right about on time, but I want to give you a chance. Oh, well, the, the last one is only the one and only, Henry Winkler, 1978. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of about wrestling and kind of not. Uh, Carl Reiner, everybody should check it out. It's, it's a really quirky little uh, sweet comedy. And what's the name of it? The One and Only. The One and Only, yeah. That, you know, I made my list of, of things that I thought John would say, and, and honestly – you only said like one of them, so I am. Uh, I'm. I'm. We, we've got like a part two. Oh, I have film. a whole bunch more. <laughs> well, John Heath, our guest right here on Meet Me at the Movies, uh, years and years of research and watching films because he got paid to do it. And uh, John, we're so glad you're here. Uh, thanks for your friendship over the years. And uh, if I ever had anybody writing a comedy about my life you would be this you would be the comic writer because you were one of the funniest people i've ever had a pleasure to know well i always like to come where people talk nice about <laughs> which kind of narrows the field down to here and my grandparents house. <laughs> all right uh, thomas thanks for being here as well thomas you have any final questions for john this is your last chance well we've got to bring you back sometime john because i think you're one of the best guests we've ever had on the show oh um, yeah so <laughs> Well, John, thanks, man. Are you setting that bar low, Thomas? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, you, you can, that's open to interpretation. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we do appreciate you for tuning in, spending time with us right here on Meet Me in the Movies. I am Noel T. Manning II. For Thomas Manning and for John Heath uh, right here on C19 TV, streaming at C19.tv. And uh, the podcast is available through WGWG.org. We ask you all to stay safe out there. Be careful, and I'll leave you with a uh, movie quote of the week, and I'm cheating just a little bit. This is actually from a TV show, but I think it fits um, because I love, uh, I love Andy Griffith, and I love music, so this is Grisco Darlin, and his quote said, if you have time to breathe, you have time for music. So until next time, I'm Noel T. Manning II for Meet Me at the Movies, and for this week, that's a wrap. Trails to the